What's going on everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we are checking out the Eachings RD200. It is a 2 inch wearable watch, 5.8 gigahertz, 48 channel FPV receiver monitor with built in DVR and on screen display. The 2 inch LCD display has a resolution of 960 by 240 pixels and the recorded video has a 640 by 480 pixel resolution and it is saved as an AVI file format. The built-in DVR supports up to a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. The OSD features are RSSI signal strength, frequency, battery level, and memory card status. It supports audio video in with the provided audio video in cable. The built-in battery is a 3.7 volt, 600 milliamp size battery, good for about 60 minutes of runtime, and it will take about two hours to charge. So you can either wear it on your wrist like a wristwatch, but it is difficult to view the screen and hold the transmitter at the same time. So by rotating the monitor to the inside of your wrist, you are kind of able to fly, but still a bit uncomfortable. So provided are some Velcro fasteners to attach the monitor to your transmitter like as if it is a monitor, but you will need to remove the wristbands. So I kind of tried it out, but ended up crashing into things due to the size of the monitor. But there are, however, brackets available to purchase for the Tyrannus QX7, the X9D and the X9D Pro, as well as the X Lite and the X Lite Pro. But if you are watching someone else fly FPV and want to save battery life on your own FPV goggles for yourself, when it is your turn to fly, this may do the job very well on your wrist. All right, so taking a closer look in the front, we have the two inch LCD monitor screen, which is pretty nice. And on the bottom, we have some ventilation holes. We have a charge light indicator and right below it, we have the micro SD card slot. And on the top, we also have some more ventilation holes. And on the left, we have a micro USB charge port. And this will also double as the video in port as well. And the flip out 3 DVI antenna. On the right side, we have some buttons. The RF is the channel slash automatic search button. And here's the power on slash record button and the frequency slash menu button. So to power up the device, long press the power button for about three seconds. And it'll bring us into the initial interface. Now the OSD will stay on for about three seconds by default. And you can press any of these three buttons to bring up the OSD again and press the button again while the OSD is on to execute the function of that particular button. Now the bottom or the channel button is to change channels. The top or the RF button is to change bands. And if you long press the RF button, it will auto scan. So let me go ahead and turn on a quadcopter and place it right in front of the box there. So we are not we are not in the frequency. I'm going to go ahead and long press the RF button. And there you go, it is searching for the strongest RF signal. And there you go, we have locked into the strongest RF signal. Now, short pressing of the power button, you can start recording a video and 
hitting it again will stop recording the video. And because we have a micro SD card inserted, we are able to do so. So like I said, you need to bring up the OSD menu in order for the button to function. So press the any button and bring up the OSD menu. And while the OSD menu is on, go ahead and press that button again for that function to work. So bringing up the OSD menu and short pressing it, we can see that it is recording a video now and the OSC turns off in three seconds and that is set by default and you can go into the settings and increase it up to 30 seconds. So hitting the button again, bring up the OS the menu and hitting the OK button again stops recording. So long press the channel button to go into the menu interface. And here we are at the menu interface and we can scroll up and we can scroll down and enter hitting the OK key here. So scrolling down, that was the playback, brightness, contrast, saturation, hue, timeout, which is set by default to three seconds and we can increase it. So hit OK and then we can go up in value or go down in value. So I'm gonna go up in value to about 10 seconds and then you can hit OK. Uh, you can go up to 20 and 30 seconds and it'll take you back to off and then three seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds. I'll be satisfied with 10 seconds. And we got the format the ST card function, and we can also reload the factory default values as well. Okay, so we can also play back a previously recorded video here in the playback section. So let's scroll up and go to the playback function and hit okay. One moment and it'll load up all of the previously recorded videos. Here you can scroll through the previously recorded videos by hitting the up button or the down button. I'm gonna hit the up button. And here is one. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK to play at regular speed. Now, at any time, you can hit the down button to fast forward two, four, and eight times the normal speed and you can hit OK to play at <clears throat> regular speed, excuse me. And you can fast rewind two, four, and eight times the normal speed as well and hit OK to play at regular speed. So let's go four winding with the bottom key here. Bring up the OSD menu and we are at two times the speed, four times the speed, eight times the speed and hit OK to play back at normal speed and hit the top key to fast rewind two times the normal speed, four times the normal speed and eight times the normal speed and hit OK to play back at normal speed. Now long press the down button to return at any time to the initial interface or the current RF channel and frequency. Okay, so here I'm flying the Emacs Baby Hawk 4R sitting in the garage. I have my head plate SE goggles on my face and I am using my jumper T8SG plus transmitter. And the watch monitor is on the table and it is being recorded by my phone. So this is how the display looks like with all of the setting parameters set to 50 and it goes from 0 to 100 like the contrast and saturation and so on and so forth. Now I have the three DBI antenna out and up to maximize signal. Now the Baby Hawk does not have very good reception, but I'm also inside of the garage. So when passing by the tree, there is a lot of static.
All right, so here is a both recording at the same time from the same flight. Now the picture in picture video is from the RD200 and the full screen is from the Headplay SE goggles. And now it is in a split screen comparison. So can you tell which is which? So just remember the Headplay video is stretched to 16 by 9 so things will look a bit wider and bigger. Not bad for a watch monitor DVR, don't you think? Okay, here it is by itself. Pretty decent recording for a small sized monitor. Some of the big monitors don't even have nice recordings and this one has a pretty decent recording. And here is the head plate goggles by itself once again. And again, side by side. So have you picked out which one is which already? Or are you still having trouble figuring out which is which. A little static there on the right one. Okay, I flick the mode switch there by mistake. Okay, so here it is by itself once again. And once again, the head play video by itself. Now I wouldn't be able to fly this thing if it wasn't for the head play SE goggles. I won't be able to fly like this looking at the two inch monitor. And here it is side by side once again. So the head play video is on the left and the RD200 video is on the right. So for its size, the recording is pretty good and it is definitely keeping up with the Headplay SE goggles. So if you want to check this thing out for yourself, the purchase link is in the video description down below. So that is it for now for the Eqin RD200. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Have a great day and we'll see you again next time.